My father died about a little over a year ago when he was 93, and I think it was only in his late 80s that I finally could get him to talk about it. And the only reason he did was because my son, Frank, yeah. started talking about it, and, and he was willing to open up to him. And talk. I mean, I knew that he was there, right. but uh, he would never talk about it. And I think part of it was because it was a tough time. He volunteered for the Air Force when he was whatever the eligible age was, 17, right. 18, and he served until, uh, until he left. I think he was there from the very beginning of the war until maybe 1945, 46, yeah. uh, during the occupation. A tail gunner on a uh, reconnaissance plane. Um, and you know, the reconnaissance planes were the planes that would go in and take pictures of a site before the uh, bombs, uh, before the planes came in and bombed them. And he basically was island hopping for, and, and in most of the major battles of, of in the Pacific during World War II, he, I mean, he talked about New Guinea, Saipan, the Philippines, um, I, I can't even remember them all, Guadalcanal, um, Guam, uh, Okinawa, and ultimately uh, to Tokyo, he was there during the occupation. For The Air and Space Museum, the Smithsonian Air and Space Museum, does a, a magazine, like a monthly magazine. Um, and um, one issue, a couple years before he passed away, was on um, uh, the, the, the last to die. It was the last soldier, or in this case an airman, who died in World War II. And this was one of his buddies that was part of his crew. And I can't remember the guy's name. Um, but um, for whatever reason, and he told me that these crews on these reconnaissance planes were actually ethnic. So like his crew was all Italian-American. Yeah. And this guy who died was an Italian-American from Pennsylvania. And uh, my father was interviewed for this article in oh. Smithsonian Air and Space Museum magazine. And it had, it had the picture of his entire crew with him. And it had his quotes. I didn't even know he'd been interviewed because he never told me. Right. And I have several copies of it. But what happened is, um, in the last few weeks of the war, um, I guess they lost a lot of the crew members, particularly the tail gunners, because sure. they were like, a lot of them never came back. And um, they created what they called bastard crews. In other words, the crews would normally stay with each other for months, if not years, but because they lost so many men, they, um, they ended up having to mix the crews. And this guy, who was the last person to die in the war, uh, was part of his crew that ended up being put in, an, in another crew and then they all died. They all were shot down by the Japanese in the last couple days of the war. So this guy was the last, last American soldier to die in World War II. Oh my and my father was his very close friend. And my father was interviewed in the paper, and he was very cri in the Smithsonian Bank. He was very critical of the decision to create these bastard crews, as they right. called them. That's the term he used. Yeah. And um, when this when this uh, airman died, uh, my father made the arrangements to take his body back to Pennsylvania and there were letters back and forth yeah. with this guy's sister that I actually have. After my father died, I found the letters. Oh and uh, he accompanied the body to Pennsylvania, uh, went to the funeral, um, and he did finally talk to me about it after that.